Something I find oddly fascinating is looking at the reasons given by the MPAA for their movie classifications. A lot of the time, these can be fairly straightforward. Language, violence, crude humor, the basic things the film's content would be judged on. However, they can also get strangely specific at times, and these can be rather amusing. I've looked at several ratings reasons and narrowed them down to ten of the oddest ones. These range from really funny to just befuddling in how specific they are. Here are my top ten strangest MPAA rating reasons. Fantastic Mr. Fox. This Wes Anderson adaptation of the Roald Dahl book combined both their sensibilities, with Anderson's deadpan sense of humor coming through with this pack of animals trying to outsmart a dangerous trio of entrepreneurs. A PG was probably expected for his first family film, but amusingly, it was for action, smoking, and slang humor. I understand action and smoking is now a standard rating reason due to the potential risk of being susceptible to viewers. But slang humor is a new one. I'm not even sure what that's specifically alluding to. Is it because the animals say cuss rather than using real swear words? I would think that would be a good thing. I tried to see if other movies also got a slang humor warning, and nope, it appears to be unique to Fantastic Mr. Fox. So congrats to Wes Anderson on achieving this unique but head-scratching classification. Indian in the Cupboard this somewhat forgotten mid-90s family film has quite a lengthy description for its content. Oftentimes, rating reasons will bring up what the characters themselves are doing, but the MPAA ended up rating outside footage edited into the movie, as they gave it a PG for mild language and brief video images of violence and sexy dancing. First of all, I love that they specify not only that there's dancing, but that it's sexy. Usually, the MPAA tends to use more formal language when describing content. And like I said, this was not a scene created specifically for Indian in the Cupboard. Instead, it comes from a scene where the characters watch the Motley Crue music video Girls, Girls, Girls on television. From what I remember, the rest of the movie was rather tame, although it's been decades since I last watched it. Probably due for a rewatch. I am left wondering about the creative decisions behind choosing that specific music video. As for the video images of violence, that comes from when they watch a western on television. So maybe Frank Oz was going for some sort of commentary? Like I said, I should watch the movie again. The Wind in the Willows, or Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, as it was retitled by Disney for its American release. Terry Jones' adaptation of this beloved story unsurprisingly has a bit of that Monty Python sensibility to it so I guess the MPAA rating reason is appropriately silly. What was it? PG for fanciful villainy and gunplay. There is indeed a bit of gunplay in the movie, although I've also seen G movies where characters are shooting off guns. But it's the fanciful villainy part I find amusing. It's a movie where talking weasels con a toad who steals a motor car and who lives in a world where everything has a face and sings songs. Fanciful is pretty much expected, so why the villains being cited? The entire film is fanciful. Or maybe they were just reacting to the Weasel's awesome musical number. I actually quite like this movie, but that's probably the highlight. Regardless of whether the PG is earned or not, Fanciful is a fitting description for The Wind in the Willows. I'll give them that. Whale Rider. This is not a rating I find funny, more completely absurd and undeserving. This is a great movie and an inspiring one for young girls, as it centers on a Maori girl trying to prove she is more than capable of being the chief of her tribe despite a long-held tradition that only men assume the role. And yet, it got a PG-13. Why? For brief language and a momentary drug reference. How momentary is it? Well, you briefly see what appears to be a marijuana pipe, and then it moves on. Hardly something that's going to register to a young audience, especially within the larger context of the story. That's one of the problems I have with the MPA rating system, as they don't take context into account, and it feels like they're going through a checklist. If you have not seen Whale Rider, I highly recommend it. Nikki Caro is also the director of Disney's upcoming Mulan, and they even share quite a number of thematic similarities. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory 
The promise of Tim Burton adapting a Roald Dahl story is sure to lead some offbeat imagery, and the MPA's way of describing Willy Wonka's unusual magical factory is certainly an amusing one. The movie got a PG for quirky situations, action, and mod language. Oh no, we have to shield the children from seeing the quirky situations. Do you think the quirky situations are friends with fanciful villainy? I wonder what the MPA specifically objected to. I mean, we do see all sorts of wacky events happen to children, mainly them getting punished in all sorts of ways. But is quirky the right way to describe those scenes? I like to think of them more as whimsically satirical. I feel you could give the quirky situations description to most Tim Burton films, not just Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Batman Returns had tiny rockets strapped to penguins' backs. The main character of Edward Scissorhands had scissors for hands. Don't even get me started on Mars Attacks. The Saw series. That's right, all of them. The interesting thing about this franchise and the MPA's response is how oddly consistent the reasons are. Saw was rated R for strong grisly violence and language. Saw 2 got the same rating for grisly violence and gore, terror, language, and drug content. Saw 3 was for strong grisly violence and gore, sequences of terror and torture, nudity and language. Saw 4 for sequences of grisly bloody violence and torture throughout and for language. Notice a pattern here? Grisly bloody violence and torture is an apt description for this series and is a thing these films are most infamous for. But I like how the MPA keeps remembering to use many of the same words. I also find it funny that all of them mention language. Profanity is obviously important to bring up, but it feels so mild after reading the first few warnings. MPA ratings are mostly created for parents, and I wonder what parent is reading the back of the DVD and saying, well, I guess you can handle the gore and violence, but someone also says a bad word. Sorry, Tommy, gonna have to wait until you're 17 before I let you watch Saw 5. Not so much strange, but reading the ratings reasons can be quite the journey. Mean Girls. With its unflinching script and satirical take on the high school social life, there are a few reasons for Mean Girls to receive a PG-13. Two of the reasons make sense, but one is just bizarre. Sexual content, language, and some teen partying. Teenagers partying? Pfft, well, that just won't do. What makes this even more amusing is that the teen parties featured in Mean Girls are pretty mild, especially compared to other teen movies which can go heavy on the debauchery. Can't Hardly Wait, which is an entire movie about a teen house party, and The Madness That Ensues was not given this reason for its PG-13 rating. Why does Mean Girls get called out? Team America World Police. Not many films feature an all-marionette cast, so Trey Parker and Matt Stone's takeoff on Thunderbirds presented the MPA with something a little different. And how did they choose to rate it? R for graphic crude and sexual humor, violent images, and strong language, all involving puppets. I love that they have to specify that the film involves puppets. The rating is usually shown on the poster and other advertising. In the case of Team America, the puppets are going to be featured prominently, so anyone looking up the rating will already know the movie stars puppets. But thank you for the info. Helpful to know it's puppets who are saying strong language before I pop the movie in. Alice in Wonderland. If you thought Charlie and the Chocolate Factory had a funny ratings reason, Tim Burton's sequel to the Lewis Carroll book is even better, with its PG for fantasy action violence involving scary images and situations, and for a smoking caterpillar. Again, why so strangely specific? Does it make that much of a difference that a caterpillar is the one doing the smoking? Are they worried an insect is going to watch Alice in Wonderland and decide to buy a hookah as a result? I also love the phrase, a smoking caterpillar. It's a combination of words you would not expect to go together, but thank you to Lewis Carroll for bringing it into the world. Now I wonder what MPA description the sequel Alice Through the Looking Glass got. Fantasy, action, peril, and some language. Oh, that's not nearly as fun. And finally, this is my favorite MPA ratings reason. It is the one that immediately came to mind when I decided to put this list together. None other than Twister. The blockbuster about a ferocious tornado wrecking everything in its path would probably be expected to get a PG-13 for things like action and scary images. Instead, they went with the best and wildest description possible. 
intense depiction of very bad weather. Not just bad weather, but very bad weather. Twister is admittedly a fictionalized and completely inaccurate portrayal of tornadoes, but if very bad weather is enough to get this movie a PG-13, what does that make the Weather Channel? What sort of weather is required to bump a movie up to R? Why didn't the MPA warn people about the weather and the hurricane heist and the day after tomorrow? I would love to be a fly on the wall when they were coming up with a reason for Twister's rating. That must have been a fun meeting. Anyway, these are my picks for some of the strangest, befuddling, and most entertaining MPA ratings reasons, but I'd love to read your choices. Share them in the comments, and I'll see you next time.